Shazam is the seventh movie inside the DCEU, and as way the DCU goes, I really don't like this franchise so far. Besides Man of Steel and Aquaman, I really haven't found much entertainment in the movie. In these movies, uh, Aquaman was really fun. It was a really entertaining movie. Uh, Man of Steel also, but all the other movies are just the most blandest superhero films that are just bleh. And um, now I can finally say the DCU has a movie that may be its best. And Shazam was a blast. This movie is pure fun. This is easily the best DCU movie. Aquaman was really great, and Aquaman is the better visual movie, I think. Aquaman is visually better. Uh, Man of Steel and Aquaman both have better action than Shazam. But Shazam more feels like a Marvel movie. It follows a very specific structure for a superhero film. But this film at heart isn't a superhero film. It's more like the film Big from uh, with Tom Hanks. Um, because of that... This film is really fun. There's a direct reference to Big in the movie, which I loved, um, causing the film to be very self-aware. This is a really self-aware superhero film that knows what it is, and that's its greatest strength. It can also be its biggest flaw. But, uh, so let's talk about the flaws first. F starting off, Mark Strong's villain. I think the backstory for him was very interesting. He is very weak, though, and a lot with the same... the whole structure of the film follows something we've seen before in superhero movies. It feels very conventional. But again, the film backs up from that um, uh, from that issue because the film knows that's an issue. They know it's a conventional superhero story. They know it follows a certain structure, but it has to follow that structure because that's the story of the character. But they do it so well because they self-aware. They know it. They, they reference the other DCU films. Um, they reference all of this. They reference all of that. They make fun of this, they make fun of that, they put a new spin onto the superhero genre. And it makes such a fun movie. And let's talk about something that I've seen every single review say, and that Zachary Levi plays a magnificent performance, and he does, he is really entertaining in this movie. You can tell that he is a 14 year old boy who has now got superpowers, and his life is crap. Like, he lives an awful life, he's running from foster homes, and Billy Bax in this movie really cared for him. And he's such a great character. Um, without the Shazam stuff, but when he turns into Shazam, he fills it with so much joy and so much energy, and it's just so entertaining, him learning how to do his superpowers. There's one montage in the film with the film uh, with the song Don't Stop Me Now playing in the background, and it was a montage that just gave me everything I could have wanted out of the Shazam movie. Like After I saw that montage, I was just like, I've now got everything I could have wanted out of this movie, and after that scene, everything got consistently better. This movie... It doesn't focus more on the action and the big superhero moments. Like, the action is still pretty solid, uh, but it focuses more on the character. And something I really liked about this movie was the emotional core to it. It had a very uh, good emotional core, which is something I really appreciate. The family aspect of the movie, I really liked. I think um, you get to know about each foster kid um, so well. And also his foster parents and his actual parents are done so well in the movie. And just them overall rounding their development is so well. And this movie's very m message is about family. And it's done so well with the hero and the villain, which is... This is the film's greatest strength. If this film did not have this family aspect and this family message, then it wouldn't be half as great as it is. And it does change Shazam from being a great movie to a good movie, because there's a big difference between a great movie and a good movie, and Shazam, I had to get, say it's a great film because of this choice, because it backs down from its own flaws, it knows its own flaws are there, but it backs down from them by going against those flaws and giving us more of something we love, and yes, there are every scene in this movie I think has been used in every single thing we've seen before, there's nothing really new in this film. But because it has extra things, and because it meshes all these certain tones together so well, with a serious tone, with an emotional tone, with just pure entertainment tone, it does everything so well, and it balances out really well. You can understand certain elements of the movie, which I really liked. There's a lot of moments in the film um, that I was not expecting to happen. I was thinking, because I... I was thinking about, okay, they might have this scene, but I don't think the film would have the balls to actually do this scene. 
And the film has the balls to do it. And it's great. It's really funny. There's a lot of really great humor in the movie. This movie is hilarious. There's a lot of laugh out loud moments. No, did you see that? You electrocuted a bus and almost killed these people. And then I caught it. It's a really funny film. Um, for the superhero thing, it goes against a lot of superhero traits we have seen. And because we're getting into a world of movies where there's a big oversaturation of superhero movies, I'm not saying that loads of superhero movies are bad, but this feels a lot more like one of these smaller, entertaining Marvel movies than it does a big, bland, boring DC film. And I'm not a hater of DC. Like, The Dark Knight, it will always be my favourite superhero film the DC has done, and the same with Superman the movie, and everything like that, but it combines Superman with the film Big, as I've said before, and combines them together to make one of the most entertaining movies I've seen in the whole year. It's not my favourite movie of the year, though, um, so far, um, but this movie is a lot better than Captain Marvel, I can say, because Captain Marvel was a okay film, but I didn't care for the main character. Here, I cared so much about the main character, and because of his performance was so energetic, so entertaining, but I cared about both sides. I cared about the Shazam element. I cared about the Billy Baxter element. They don't put much backstory to the wizard stuff and the Shazam stuff, only with the villain. And I'm going to talk about the villain for quite a while here, because Mark Strong is a great actor. He played a lot of villains, and I really enjoyed those villains. He's a very over-the-top, really humorous, fun villain. And he has that here as well. His motivations weren't all that clear, but I understood him because he had an interesting backstory. The first five minutes of the movie is a big backstory for him, and I thought that was played out very, very well. And he has these beast things that uh, come out of the Seven Deadly Sins or something, and that's all we really get to see about the wizard stuff. We don't really get to see any of the background of the Shazam legend or anything like this because it focuses more on the smaller grounded story which i think a lot of people would have preferred and it makes this a lot more family friendly fun film but this movie also has some pretty gruesome funny scary moments with the villain as well and because i believe the director the same as the director from aquaman the director from aquaman is mainly uh, known for horror, the actor, uh, the, the actor, the director from Shazam is mainly known for horror films, and you can really tell they wanted to put a few horror scenes in there, and some of the horror elements are really good. Um, again, there's a lot of moments in the movie that I wasn't expecting, and when they came onto the screen, I was like, I expected that, but I'm actually surprised that they put it in there. I was expecting something like that to happen, but I wasn't expecting it like that. And I really love that. There are two end credit scenes in the movie, which I will not spoil, but they are very fun. The film stays at a constant pace all the way through. It never gets boring. There's, there's not one scene where I was bored throughout the entire film. And I really enjoyed that. But the one thing I really want to talk about in this movie is um, two motivational things for the characters. With the villain and with the hero. Because they have the exact same motivation about family. And the hero and the villain are basically the same because they both get chosen for the Shazam role. One of them takes it, one of them doesn't. Uh, one of them is sort of made to, and one of them goes against it. And there's a big contrast between the hero and villain, but the hero and villain never talk about this. They never m meet this conflict, and they both have the exact same views on family at the start of the movie. But the villain never improves, the villain never has an arc when the hero, Shazam, Billy Baxton does. He have a huge arc in this film about his family, and that is amazing when the villain doesn't have that, and that really contrasts the villain and the hero very well. Some of the best moments in the movie for me, but it never really shows that. I love some of the self-aware stuff with the villain, though, because, like, they know he's a bland, boring villain, so they try and make him as interesting as they can, but I think the movie needed to have a blander villain for some moments to be more entertaining for the main character. And I think that's okay. There's a lot I have to sh say about Shazam. Uh, there's a lot I can analyze and look at. But really, this is just a blast. This is a really fun film. Uh, in terms of action stuff, like, the movie's action is really good uh, for the most part. But there's not much of it. There's not much action in the film. Because it focuses more on the more heartfelt moments. There's a great moment in the movie that I don't want to spoil for you. But it was quite emotional. 
and it really, really got us to understood Billy Baxton's character, and it really, really gave him that character arc that I was hoping for. And as a character-driven film, this movie's characters and message are the thing that drive it, but also adds all these funny elements, and I really only have a few flaws in the film, but those few flaws are all backed down by just such fun elements that go against those flaws. So it sort of makes the film perfect, but not perfect at the same time, because it has those flaws there, but they can't do anything about those flaws, so they make everything else so entertaining and so great and as good as they can. I've gone on for a very long time, so let's give my grade and rating right now. Overall, I think Shazam is great, and I'm going to give it an A-. I'm also going to give this movie an 8.6 out of 10. This is a really good movie, and this isn't a movie just for superhero fans, I think. Like, this movie appeals to everyone. Like, if you don't like superhero movies, you can still really enjoy this as a family-friendly, really fun movie. It's just a blast. If you just want two hours of escapism, uh, go, sh go and see this movie. It is a really fun time. Let's comment down below your opinions on Shazam if you've seen it. And, of course, thanks for watching. Goodbye.